What's cracking, yo? Welcome back to Boo TV. Appreciate you for stopping in. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified, and let's get into the topic for today. Back again, y'all, with another Larry Bird reaction video. As you all know, we are plowing through this Larry Bird content. We have got a lot of different requests and recommendations, so I want to make sure I honor as much of those as I possibly can and react and talk about them. So if you have any recommendations, Larry Bird or not Larry Bird, anything, you want to hear me talk about subject matter, things like that, let me know in the comment section. I'll put it on the list and evaluate the subject matter as I see fit. Go check out our Larry Bird playlist, our reaction video playlist, and all other playlists right here on Boo TV. Got some good stuff and great community uh, we're building so far. No question about it. So this video right here, NBA legends and players explain why Larry Bird would destroy today's NBA was recommended to me by none other than Sharon Bird, relative of Larry Bird. I don't know. Still trying to figure that out. Shout out to you, Sharon. And also today's NBA. Appreciate the recommendation. If I missed anybody else that recommended this, I apologize, but I just want to say thank you to you as well. Me personally, looking at the subject of this video, uh, a lot of people seem to think that Larry Bird will still dominate in today's era. I totally agree with the Larry Bird stuff I've seen, I've heard, I've read, uh, and the eye test more than anything. And looking at what, what he was able to do in his era of basketball, Larry Bird would hands down destroy today's NBA, completely dominate it, completely. And it would tap into his three-point shooting, which he was very elite at, but didn't utilize it much in his era. So I can only imagine what Larry would, what Larry would do in today's NBA. It, it's actually, it's it's almost like it's unfathomable. You know what I mean? But let's check out these legends and players' reaction um, and their opinion on why Larry Bird would completely destroy the league. And they're all correct. Let's check it out prime Larry Bird in today's NBA. This is the most intriguing player for this type of series because he will fit so well in today's era. He yes. has a complete package of what you want in today's NBA. Larry Bird had many ways to impact the game and his IQ was remarkable. You could argue he had the highest basketball IQ in NBA history. The most underrated Dude, part of Larry Bird's game for me was his defense. He led the league in defensive win shares four times and finished second twice. Only George Mikan, Bill Russell, and Tim Duncan have more seasons than him as league leaders and only Hakeem Olajuwon is tied with them. Despite his reputation as more of an offensive player, this actually puts him in the company of some of the greatest defenders in NBA history. He also made three all-defensive teams. Sure, he wasn't a lockdown defender like Dennis Rodman in one-on-one -on -one situations, but he could hold his own and was great at reading passing lanes for steals. So he wasn't a liability, which was one of the biggest myths. And to prove that Larry Bird would dominate today's NBA, there are players like Nikola Jokic and Luka Doncic who are thriving in the league. Both players possess some of Larry Bird's qualities. Jokic's freakish passing abilities, excellent off-ball play, and Luka's tough shot making and competitive mentality. But neither are a better shooter or defender. Damn that, pass. that is why in today's league it's difficult to find a player to compare Larry Bird to because he is a composite of many players. The only thing you have to worry about with a prime Larry Bird in today's NBA is whether he'll be ejected after trash talking every player guarding him because he will destroy players mentally too. Like the guy was telling players what he would do before he even had the ball in his hands. So I'm going to show you NBA legends and players sharing stories of how dominant and skilled Larry Bird was. And after this video, please tell me how many points you think a peak Larry Bird will average in today's league. Enjoy the video, man. Prior to, prior to that NCAA tournament, still was the most watched NCAA Finals game in, in, in NCAA history. How much did you know about Larry Bird prior to that game? Well, Shannon, um, the summer before, they had the WIT tournament. Okay. And they brought all the best college players together. Okay. To play against the world. Okay. And man, <clears throat> I see this guy, you know, blonde. Hair, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I said, all right, let me see if he can play. Okay. Man, I'm sitting there watching him shoot Shannon. He must have made 30 in a row all net. I so said, he was Steph Curry before Steph yeah, Wade. Yeah, yeah, Steph. yeah, yeah. And I'm sitting there saying, <laughs> This dude can play. Okay. So, you know, brothers, we always say, okay, can the white dude really play? Correct. You know? Right. So, so then I said, oh, man, he a bad boy. Right. Then we got in the game. Jack Gibbons was player of the year that year. Right. He tore him up, man. 
from Kentucky, Jack Gibson from Kentucky. Con- Kentucky. Because they won the national championship That's in 78. Right. That same time. Yeah, yeah, okay. Man, Larry Bird was taking it to him. <laughs> I said, oh, man. I'm calling back home saying, oh, he for real. He for real. This right. dude, Larry Bird? Right. Oh, he got it. He right. can play. He's dominating Jack right. Gibson. I don't know. I think he might average 30. I mean, here's the thing. Nobody could ever rush Larry Bird. I know guys are way more athletic now, but his ability to shoot the ball, depending upon the team he's on, like he can get anywhere he wants to be and shoot over smaller players. And he was one of the most crafty players the game has ever seen. So I think his game translates to any time period. Uh, Larry. Pause. Jay Will said he thinks he would average 30. You think he would? You think he would average 30? No. I know he would average at least 30, and I think he might average 40 something. <laughs> Shit. In today's league, how he could shoot the ball, how he could dominate the post everywhere on the floor, really. With all the extra possessions now, this fast pace, this tempo, and the fat Larry on the fast break. And if and if he and if Larry does average thirty, you you, you guarantee he gonna have about ten assists with them thirty. Cause he's he he he's a he likes to distribute a, distribute the ball, and he's not Larry's not a ball dominant kind of player. Larry doesn't monopolize the ball in a way you know like a Luka Doncic, LeBron James, or James Harden, Russell Westbrook do. So if he's not averaging forty, it's by choice. <laughs> it's because he's he's trying not to to um, dominate the basketball so much. But please believe, he's, he will. It ain't no thing. He will get you at least 30. Easy. Easy. Pissed off, 45. I'm calling it. Bird talked a lot of shit. Bird used to tell me, look here, man. I'm going to go shoot this motherfucker jump in your face right there in that corner. And it's going to be your Christmas present. I'm going to wrap it up and bust your head open. All that shit. He was the coldest <laughs> dude I ever seen with that shit, man. Everybody be talking about these great greats. They don't be always mentioning him. He was the shit. Yeah. The shit, man. He'll give it to you any way he wanted to. Any way he wanted to. Larry Bird was cold. Cold dude, man. Real cold. Pause. I've been saying that. I was like, I find it strange how we, we always have these greatest of all time debates, these legendary debates, these these kind of debates, but Larry Bird's name is rarely brought up, and it blows my mind. It it it, it blows. Gary Payton is one hundred percent correct, and I love Gary Payton's opinion. I, I usually agree with a lot of shit he says. Usually, he's absolutely right. He's absolutely right. Cold, bro. Cold. I'm gonna bust your head. <laughs> let's 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 resume. I don't know if there were, if I could ever tell you a memory. I'll just tell you that Larry was a phenomenal basketball player. The guy had unbelievable physical and mental toughness, which set him apart. I mean, that that, that guy uh, just would play through pain. I love that. I know. And here comes Larry Bird making his return from out of of the right cheek. Yes. Nothing bothered him. Unbelievable competitor. Great hands, great vision, great feel for the game. And just, you know, could go out every single night and just play at an unbelievably high level. Didn't have to shoot the ball really well to have a good game because he did so many different things. I said the dude just knew how to play. Yes. Right? And the thing that I loved about him is that he was a shit talker. <laughs> yeah, I, and I wish you'd have got a chance to play against him, Robert, because I swear yeah. to God, you'd have loved playing against mm-hmm. him because the dude would just tell you where he's going, shoot it in your face, talk shit to you, and run back down the floor. Yeah. And he he was he was just one of those guys that, you know, he he had he just had it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah, he I had it. So and yeah. I saw it in college and obviously saw it a whole lot closer. I love that man. <laughs> <laughs> when we get a chance yeah. to play against the Celtics. He was the biggest trash talker back in the day. But he would back it up. The first guy there, he was the last guy to leave. He wore that body out with the jumpers and the running and the movement and the, and the concentration and the focus and the discipline and the sacrifice. He had it all. He wanted the light on him. He wanted the focus and he wanted that ball. 
And if it ever got to the point where Casey Jones, a coach who we just loved and would do anything for, if Casey would ever call somebody else's play, Larry would just say, no, no, no. I'm, I'm shooting this ball. And, and he would. Two seconds on the shot clock. Bird wants a three out of it. And he gets it. Championship game. Growing up in Boston, people all used to always talking about that he can't jump, he can't do this, he can't do that. And, you know, a lot of my friends was like that, you know. So, I, you know, I got to the league. I called all my friends back <laughs> up. I said, you know, all that trash that you were talking, you need to squash all that. This this man is great. He can, he can whatever you were saying for a man who can't jump, he he'll demo, he can demo, he's, he's demolishing everybody. So your mm. your guys are saying, how can you let this guy? Oh, <laughs> he, he'll, he's doing it on everybody. <laughs> he's doing it on everybody. He's doing it on the best defensive players in the league. I have to give the edge to Bird. I mean, he can get his own shot off. He can get his teammate. Basically, what Magic did, he was able to do, plus be an offensive threat all the way out to That's the cool. three-point line. That's an incredible asset. They were pretty much the same size. Yep. They were both slow. They were both, you know, they were not both leapers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but Bird, that outside three, and they were both high IQ guys. That but pass. I, I got to give the edge to Bird. That's a, the play. Pause, 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 pause. I've heard a lot of people, and I, I actually, I agree with the assessment. I agree with that assessment, 100%. And I've heard people... I've seen people's comments in the comment section over the last couple of weeks have basically said the same thing. Hey, when you break it all down, everybody likes to say magic, 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 magic. But nah, bro, Bird was better than magic. He could do almost everything magic could do. But magic couldn't do everything Bird could do. And, and, it's, and it's, that, it's the offensive bag that Larry has that's so much more lethal. As far as from a scoring perspective, was Magic Johnson a better passer? Yeah, but he was marginally a better passer than Larry Bird. It's not like there's a big there's a big gap between Larry's scoring ability and Magic's scoring ability, but there isn't that much of a gap between Magic's passing and Larry's passing. It's 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 a fact, man. Larry, Larry I agree with that assessment. Let's let's resume play against the dream team. This was the legendary game where the college guys came in and Chuck Daly let y'all tear their ass up and as soon as y'all started getting back, he ended it, right? So yeah, so funny. So when we got an invitation, it was eight of So pause, I actually have a video specifically with this Jamal Mashburn story, but I'm gonna let it play through. Us. It was myself, Bobby Hurley, Alan Houston, uh, Chris Webber, Rodney Rogers, Eric Montrose. Shout out Eddie Rodney Martin. Rogers, man. Shout yeah. out to OG. Yeah. And, um, and Grant Hill was on that squad. So we get to La Jolla, San Diego, and we check into the Marriott. We go up to our floor, and we're walking in the corridor, and we see this tall white guy coming down the hall. And I'm like, damn, that looked like Larry Bird. So Larry Bird coming down the hallway, me and Chris Webber, and Larry Bird, you don't realize how big Larry Bird is until you stand yeah, up close to Larry yeah. Bird. Exactly. As a, yeah. Man. Larry Bird, legit 6'10". Larry nah, Bird. real talk. When yeah. I first stood yeah. up against him when he was real coaching talk. the pace, I was like, damn. So he, he walked by us and he says, y'all those college guys? And we was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we the college guys. And he looked at us and he said, get some fucking rest. It's going to be a long <laughs> week. And walked off. And we was like, what the hell? Larry. <laughs> Which out of got us it? Yeah, I'm like, okay. You know, we're like, all right, what's going I, on here? I wanted to say what's up, and he just came <laughs> to me like this, like, dang. Larry broke into the league, broke into the year. Yeah, had a strong uh, first year. So I knew that I was teaming up with someone that was franchise changing type talent. You know, this guy, I think he was born to pay, play basketball. Seeing him come in. And, and making the adjustment early, taking a team that had won 20 games the year before. And, you know, the next year, I mean, you know, they're 40 plus, and the next year they're 60, 60 plus. When Burr was mm -hmm. at Indiana State, and the first time we really got a chance to see him play on television, uh, Indiana State played Bradley. And then, you know, fast forward, then they played DePaul. 
and Mark Aguirre, Terry Cummins, Teddy Grubbs on that team. And Larry Bird just, you know, he does his thing. And then, of course, they went on and they, they played magic at Michigan State. But Bird was, a, you know, again, you know, one of the, the greatest shooters, champions, uh, competitors to ever play in our game. You now join Bill Russell and Wilt Chamberlain as the only players in the 40-year history of the NBA to win the league's MVP award three years in a row. Yeah, Rob, I wish you would have played against him, man. Larry Bird was the biggest shit talker in the league back in the day. <laughs> he would tell you exactly where he was going, what he was going to do. And he did that to us in the finals. He was like, guys, don't worry about it. I'm going to go right over here to the corner. I'm going to catch the ball. I'm going to shoot it. And ain't shit y'all can do about it. I mean, just like, and he did exactly that. You know, yeah. so I wish you would have got a chance to play against him. You know, because I always think about that moment. I don't know how true this is, but you remember the time when he was playing Atlanta and he told the guy, he says, I'm a bank of three on you. And the guy's is bullshit. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> on an <laughs> out-of-bound play. Throughout the game, it was yep. one way, throughout the yep. game, he never got to say, he said, you know what? He goes back in the game. I think he had like 50 points that yeah, game or something. Up, yeah, Kevin, and, I noticed it because Kevin McHale yeah. ended up having the most points ever scored by uh, a, a Boston Celtic, mm -hmm. right? And Larry told him he should have got 60 because he broke it against Atlanta like yeah. two or three days later. <laughs> yeah, and it was in the bench. Atlanta bench got in trouble because they out here rooting for yeah. like, oh, <laughs> Blake. I'm like, <laughs> you can see it. I mean, yeah. if you go back and look at the tape, you can see the bench. Yeah. Every shot he made, yeah. they're going crazy. It's like, he unbanked this one. And it's like, see, that's what you want because when someone's telling you what they can do and you can't stop it, you know they are bad they're man, bad so, man. Yeah. Uh -huh. But I, I look at guys in this era now and you you say, okay, you look at Bird and says, well, I could have stopped him because, you know, he, he's slow. It's sort of like Luca now. Luca, yes. You watch Luca. Luca yes. is so freaking slow. And you're like, why can't they stop that? Right. I'm like, yes. but when you're crafty and you know how to play, that's all you That's that's all you need. Yeah. yeah. I, I think Bird is fast compared to Luca. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I see I Luca, he be going slow as hell. <laughs> yeah. And he'll get by you. But, yo, Larry probably looked like fucking sprinter compared to, <laughs> to, compared to the way Luca played. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. I think it was 86, 87. So I, we were playing Boston Celtics in the Eastern Conference Finals. So they gave me the task of guarding Larry Bird. <laughs> so it's guarding Larry Bird, I'm like this 25-year-old rookie in the league. They said, Dennis, you have to guard him. And I'm like, and <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Guard him. So I, that, that was my whole job, to guard the toughest guy on the team, on, on the other teams. So, you know. So I'm guarding him, and every time I turn my head, he's over there in the three-point line. He said, I'm over here, Rook. I'm like, <laughs> you know, I got to go out there and run out there like a dumb, dumb ass. He's <laughs> going out there trying to contest him. He hit the three. I'm like, okay, da da da, -da. I remember the Portland game. <laughs> it was a Bowl Sunday. We were playing the Portland Trailblazers. He had like 52 points or something like that. We were down three. He's a remarkable, crazy three-point shot. He was leaning. And, he, and I was like, there's no way he's going to hit the shot. DJ again to make the inbound pass. The double team in Bird. Larry, fake, fall away. Hits it at the buzzer. All right. He's leaning, falling. He's three point. I'm like, this guy's amazing. One thing I do remember now, this is a practice, is I'm making a backdoor cut. And Larry actually spun the ball. Like, I had never dreamed of spinning the ball. He back spun the ball, bounced out in front of me. I about pulled a hamstring because I thought the damn ball was going out of bounds. It popped back up and it hit me in my hands. He just said, you get open, I'll hit you. And I went like, ooh, OK then. I was like, <laughs> and that I do remember because I remember thinking, I'm going to try that spin pass. I tried it once and said, I'm not doing that ever again. Like, I threw it out of bounds. Come off of the ball. Back to Larry Bird to McHale. What a pass. Very, 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 very true. I, I like I like that Mikel said that. When you have an elite passer like Larry Bird, man, uh, just get open. Just get open. He's going to find you. And even when you don't look open, even when there's a small window of opportunity, a small sliver of space, defenders all around, Larry Bird's passing was so elite, he could still fit that ball through that space. Almost like he had a goddamn portal. It's like, how did the ball get through there? How did he slip the ball past all those defenders? How did the ball get in this guy's hands? Players like Magic, players like Larry, players like Jason Kidd, your hands have to be ready at all. Expect a pass at all times. Because when you don't even think you can get the ball slipped to you, that player will. That was Larry.
In the league at that time, do you have a feel for who players felt was the, the better player between those two? To be honest with you, the black players gravitated to Magic and the white yeah. players gravitated to Bird. Mm, you know? Really? And people with sense yeah. could see the difference. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it wasn't about color or anything else. Yeah, it was, yeah. hey, this guy hit can ball. This yeah. guy and that's why we used to always look at Bird's like, hmm, maybe he's not white. <laughs> you know, in a, in a little bit of a while. Because he's got a lot of swag. Oh, yeah. Before the world was really hot. Yeah. Played in the garden. I got checked in the game, and Larry Bird was just standing there. And I walked right up to him and was like, how you doing, Mr. Bird? I'm, 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 you know, and then he just had his hands on his hip. And he doesn't even look at me the whole time. No. He looks I at Paul Westfall because they were teammates together. And he go. Paul, I know y'all ain't got this fucking rookie <laughs> duck in me right now. You got to be fucking... And I got my hand out. I'm, my hand is still out, so I'm just like, oh, well. Uh, somebody come guard 33, because I am I think I'm a guard. <laughs> Some, like, for him to talk trash and never even icon or talk to me, I was like, ooh, this dude is dangerous. Uh, Magic was cool when I met him. Yeah. I, I got on the court in a form and Went right up to him, forget about the game. Hi, Magic, how you doing? Say, hey, what's up, baby? LA, you home? What's oh, yeah. So the next. Pause. That's, this is why I say Larry Bird's sense of humor, his style of trash talk, the kind of things he did, the trolling, hilarious. Hilarious. And he was hands on the head. Ain't even make, ain't even make no eye contact. No, 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 no. Larry's just like. Because Larry, Larry was looking for the challenge. Larry's looking for the challenge, baby. Next morning, we get up and we go to um, practice, and Roy Williams is our coach. But we only got eight. So we like, well, how are we practicing? And what are we practicing for? So we spent, I want to say, an hour doing the three-man weave. And I'm like, what's going on here? Then they bus us to another location where the Dream Team is practicing. And he's about 400 people standing outside uh, waiting for the dream team to come out. They take us up to a top floor and the dream team is practicing. They're finishing up their practice. And then they say, all right, get loose and stretch out. We're like, okay, we playing? They're like, yeah, yeah, we're going to play next. So we get out the gates. Like the first 15 minutes, we kicking they ass. <laughs> we, but we running them all that Bobby Hurley in the lane, killing John Stockton. So they stopped the game and turn off the score. I think we were up like 72, 66 or something, 64, something like that. We we um, lit their ass up and then something happened. We're sitting there and we get back to the hotel. Rodney Rogers says something to, it's a group of them. It's Larry Bird, Magic Johnson, and everybody's shooting the shit. And Rodney Rogers said, hey, Larry, you ain't hit a jumper since 84. Magic heard that shit. And we ain't think nothing of it. The next day we came in, and I'd never seen this. And this one, I was like, this is a different breed. Magic Johnson fed Larry Bird the ball probably about eight times in a row down court. Larry Bird got the ball on Rodney Rogers, and every time he was about to make a move, he told him what he was going to do. One dribble, pull up, going left, off glass. Like, <laughs> fuck it. Hmm. One dribble, going right, spin, shot. Fuck it. Fuck it. He scored nine times or eight times in a row left the court to go lay down because he couldn't sit on a bench. He had to lay down because of his back. And said, young fella, look like 84, huh? And <laughs> Last time he made <laughs> yeah, he says, So I'm sitting there and I'm like, wow. I said, so that's, 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 they kicked our ass for the rest of the week. Larry and those guys, it's something I've watched my whole life. I turn around and Larry goes, what's up, Sal? What's up, Larry? He goes, you made it. Yeah, man, he goes, oh, uh, y'all not double teaming? I said, nah, <laughs> it's me on you. He goes, for real? I go, yeah. Go, yo, 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 mouse in the house, mouse in the house. And he runs down to the post and posts me up.
And boom, and boom. It's going, he said, it's going to be a long night, Sal. <laughs> and Larry with a long jump shot. We, we up one, and we come out of the huddle, and, and Bird looks at me, and, and Kent Benson is guarding Bird. And Bird looks at me, and he goes, he's got no shot. And he sends it right to, to, to Benson as he was standing there, right? And sure enough, he gets it in on the left side of the court, takes it down to the baseline. All right, here's Dennis, gets it in the bird. Larry, a runner. Got it! Ball game's over, Boston wins! Knocked it down. They Love that celebration. Down. He walks off, he goes, I told you, you can't put him on me. He said, you better get somebody else who can guard me. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the video and tell me how many points you think a prime Larry Bird will average in today's NBA. So make sure you like, share, subscribe, and show love to the YG gang. And I'm out. Dude, I love how every time he sees what the, the, the defensive assignment is on him, he's like, is this, is this your guy? Is this what y'all doing? Is this what you got? No, no double team? Him? Rookie? Shit. Larry said, I'm looking for a challenge, man. Now, now I'm, I'm going to tell you, yeah, I'm just using the left. Y'all going to put this rookie on me? Shit, it's going to be boring. I, I'm going to just use my left hand. I'm going to just use my right hand. I'm going to play one foot. I, I'm, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut, cut my leg off with a chainsaw and just play with one leg because I'm Larry Bird and I just got to make things fun and challenging for the hell of it inside of a NBA regulation game. I'm just having fun with everything because I'm that elite. <laughs> oh, my God. That's some good, yeah, yeah. In this era, in this NBA, with the fast pace, the lack of defense, all the extra, all the possessions, Larry could easily. Larry's giving you thirty plus in his sleep, and I really think he could average probably like 40, 40 something in today's league if he wanted to. And with with the pace and everything, he could probably give you forty with seven dimes easily just saying bro like but you know that's not really his style of play he doesn't monopolize the ball but he's so efficient at his size 6'10 with his skill set listen man he and all his players are small today Larry Bird was averaging double digit rebounds back in his day and he was out there rebounding with actual bigs like big dudes physical dudes in today's league man larry would average 16 rebounds i'm not lying larry would average it's, it's, it sounds crazy right these numbers I'm, I'm talking about right 40 points 16 rebounds seven to ten assists if he was giving you double digit, double digit rebounds back then you might as well add another six rebounds in this era with the lack of rebound, the lack of size, all these shots that are going up, easily, 16 rebounds. Easy. 30 points is a given, but I'll give him 40. And throw in 7 to 10 assists. Book it. Crazy, man. Crazy. His rebounding is overlooked, man. Easy, man. Larry Larry would destroy this league. And I'm glad Luka Doncic and Nikola Jokic is out here with their unathletic slow asses. Um, because that just shed light on, you know, if, if you are as highly skilled, you have craft, you don't have to be the most athletic person. You could dominate. And Larry, like I said, Larry's more athletic than Nikola Jokic and Luka Doncic. Like I said... Th th those guys make Larry Bird look like a, a cross country sprinter. Larry, they make Larry Bird look like Usain Bolt. Man, Larry, Larry would crush, bro, crush. And don't, don't, don't think he's complete. Don't, don't just think he's like non. Like compared to certain players, yeah, he's non athletic. But Larry will catch you sleeping, blow by you, and finish with a dunk. Stop playing. Skill, baby. Don't let Larry catch you lacking. Yeah. Let me know what you guys think about it. What do you think Larry would do in today's NBA, in today's era? How do you think he would fare? I'm sure most of you probably agree with me. But I would like to hear, like, give me some numbers. What, what number what do you think he would average? Because...
that's like God mode, bro. God mode. Mm. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, stay notified. Drop any recommendations for me in the comment section. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And take care. We out, baby.